Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Mona asked if we could move in together maybe a week before we graduated. When it came down to it, it wasn't a big deal. She had found an apartment she liked but couldn't afford on her own. When you think about how hard it is for a college student to pay dollar $1,000 a month and buy their own books, you can see why. It was the cheapest apartment she could find that didn't have roaches everywhere, but she only made dollar $600 a month. What should a girl do? I don't think I was the first person she thought of. We were friends, but we weren't very close. That is, we sometimes hung out, and neither of us really disliked the other's personality. It's easy to figure out what she would have done. She would have started by talking to her best friend, Anne. Anne was the link that brought us together in the first place. I had known Anne since we were both in the fifth grade. Anne would have told Mona at least one of the following and maybe all of them, one, she was going to college in a different state. Two, she and her boyfriend, Rich, were moving in together. Three, she didn't think they could live together in the same apartment. She would have said that's what good friends usually do. She would have given her a big hug and then left. She had been staying away from all of her friends for a few weeks so that the pain wouldn't be too much when she had to leave in early July. She would have asked Janie the same thing next. Janie would have said no because she had already paid for her dorm room for the semester. Sally, Meg, Sarah, Charlotte, and maybe even Michelle, if she had asked, would have said the same thing. Joey would have said no because he didn't want to be tempted, leaving me first, then Jim, and then other Jim. So when Mona asked me, Morgan, would you like to share an apartment? I was more than happy to say yes. I was going to take a year off to save some money. About two weeks before we moved, she told me everything over the phone. There's only one bedroom, but we can easily turn the dining room into a living room and move you into the den. I guess we'll have to share the bathroom and the small kitchen. It will be busy, but it's in a nice area, so it will be worth it. I just had to agree. The apartment I was going to get was in a pretty bad part of Fairfield, so this would be a big step up. We moved in, then. It wasn't very big, but the ceilings were high. It's always nice when you give us space where we don't need it. But we had enough space, so the small dining room turned into our small living room. She got the master bedroom, which was pretty big, and I got the den, which was a lot smaller. At first I said no. She had a third more room than I did, and I was about to run out. Mona gave me a soft look and told me, don't act like that, Morgan. I'm paying for all the food. It makes sense. A good thought, yeah. In the end, she was right. Mona was great. We kept living as time went on. It had been about a month. I was working at Giorgio's Italian restaurant, and she was going to school full-time and working full-time. And, you know, my room wasn't nearly as small as I thought it was. Maybe I got used to it. I'm glad Mona was there to help me get used to things. And we were getting closer as friends. When we were both home at the same time, we would rent old movies. Sabrina was a favorite. It was her idea, and she kept telling me it was a good one every time she chose the movie. A good thought. I remember a lot of really clear details from those times, you know? Even more so when Mona comes up with a good idea, which happened a lot. She often made me feel stupid by pointing out what was obvious. It seemed like all she had to say was that it was a good idea and I'd see it. I just needed to know how to do it. She once told me, you know, Morgan, I think it would be a good idea for you to shave. I had a goatee, which I'd had for about a year. Now that we've been living together for a month, she says I should get rid of it. I was surprised at first, but after I thought about it, I realized that, as usual, she was right. It was a great plan, so I shaved it off. Was that just a brief moment of confusion? Why did I get rid of it? I shook the thought out of my head and went back outside. She stroked my now smooth face and said, I love it, with a big smile. You need to put lotion on your skin, such as oil of Olay. What? I thought what she said was strange. Oh, really? I like how smooth your skin is. In fact, you should also use some of that soap that moisturizes the skin. Oh, even Nair, don't have hair. She looked at me with puppy dog eyes and said, Please? It makes sense. The wings flap, and then I understood it. She was right on the money. 
So often she was right, and this time was no different. It was a great plan. Why wasn't I able to see it? I liked how smooth my face felt, so why not the rest of me? I loved Mona for taking care of me like that. She was great at showing me where I needed to change. What would I do if she wasn't around? So it was written, and so it was done. I used her bath products and Nair to make everything smooth again. It was a great feeling. I should have done this sooner. Mona, you're too nice to me because you always help me. Having a lot of hair wasn't manly or badass. It was just gross. I decided that smooth was the way to go, so I did that. She told me later that it was a good idea for me to start using her scented soaps. She had a point. All of the ideas are great. I couldn't believe I'd never thought of this before. <laughs> After she told me it was a good idea, it all seemed so clear. I think life is pretty, if nothing else. I was starting to see that. She kept me up to date and stylish by showing me all these great ideas that she had been doing her whole life, and now I could see that she was right. Why hadn't I done it all along? I can't believe how stupid I was. She treats me so well. Like I said, we had a lot of fun when we were all together at home. Ideas are always so good. It seemed like she always had another one. Something else I should know. Many of those times stick out in my mind because they were so important to me. One night, both Mona and I were lucky enough to have the night off. She was in the living room watching Roman Holiday, and I was in my room playing Civilization the Three. I popped out for a second to get a can of Pepsi, and she looked at me with that funny look she has. What? I said it in a casual way. It would be a lot of fun if you let me change your look. Once more. What? Oh, come on. Again, she was right. Now I could see that it was a good idea. It was just an opportunity for Mona to have some fun. <sighs> what was the problem? I was sure enough of being a man that something like this didn't bother me. I hope that Mona is happy. So I let her do whatever she wanted to my face. She put on lipstick, eyeliner, mascara, something called foundation, and blush. All of it. I think it took about an hour, but I'm not sure for sure. People say that time flies, but when she was done, she turned me around so I could see myself in the mirror. I was surprised to see that it didn't look too bad. I wouldn't wear this stuff again if I could help it. She said, wow, Morgan, you look very good in that outfit. It would be smart to wear it more often. She said it was a good idea. She had a point. She was right again. How was it that she could always see things I couldn't? It was so clear that I did look good with all this makeup on, and since my hair was already long, it worked out really well. It wasn't just a good idea. It was a great one. If I walked around like this, girls would be all around me. Everything was just right. As always, Mona, you're right. I should get some for myself. And she was adamant that she buy it for me. When I got home from work two days later, there was a mirror and a makeup box on my dresser. Mona treats me so well. The next day at work, I would be able to look nice. So when I got up the next morning to go to work at Giorgio's, Mona helped me get dressed for the occasion. I was sure to get noticed. What I did was make a splash. I was fired right away. I thought they were jerks. Mona told me not to worry about getting a job because she had just been given a raise and could now pay for the whole place on her own. She just wanted me to clean the house and keep it in good shape for her cook and things like that. She said it was a good thought. Well, she was paying my rent, so I figured it would be the least I could do to help out around the house. It was a great plan. So all I could do was cook and clean our small loft apartment. I kept looking for work anyway. Mona even offered to help me look nice for my job interviews, but every time they gave me a funny look and told me to go away. I was the housekeeper because I couldn't find a job. Mona even started giving me a small allowance so I could keep buying makeup and going to the movies. One day, though, she tells me that her parents want to have dinner with us. We didn't have a table for dinner, so we ate on the couch. But Mona's parents aren't like that at all, so we had to find a solution. We thought about it for about an hour before Mona came up with an idea. Well, we could move your bed and dresser in and do everything else, separate the closet in half. Then, you know... We could move everything from the living room into your room, a local furniture store, to buy a dinner table. I'm not sure. What do you think? It makes sense, a good thought. 
so that was it. So it was written, so it was done, and Mona's room, which had seemed big before, was now very small. Then her parents changed their minds. Oh, well, that was pretty much all I could say. But Mona said that since we had already moved everything around and bought a dinner table, we might as well keep the new arrangement. But it would take some time to get used to. But Mona said it was a good idea, and who was I to argue? It wasn't easy. Mona had even moved my makeup box down to her vanity. We ate dinner at our table, which is the problem and the curse of this apartment, and I had an idea. The table should be sold. No, and why? No way. The table is nice. We should keep it because it is a good table. That was the end of my argument. She was right about the table. What should we do then? She had a thoughtful look on her face, and then with a eureka. Look, we should get rid of your dresses and put your clothes in mine. It makes sense. I said, I agree. In the end, she was right. We could share some as well. You want me to put on your undergarments? We'd save money, right? Only have to buy one set of socks, etc. We're about the same size. It makes sense. She had a point. It was a good idea, and once I thought about it, it all made sense. We'd all wear the same undergarments and socks, and everything would be fine. My private things were still in the dresser when it was taken away the next day. It was gone for good when the garbage men took it away. You wouldn't believe how big the room just got. And now that we could see everything, we saw how bad my stuff and hers looked next to each other. Not a single thing fit together. She said it would be a good idea to let her redecorate everything one day. So she went out and bought sheets in soft colors. It was all very girly. One problem was solved, but it brought up another. We lived that way for about a month, until the idea of sharing a closet pretty much fell apart. Everything got lost and mixed up. It wasn't clear at all. Another meal, another conversation, and another good idea. Like always, Mona took charge. I was beginning to realize that really she was the man of the house. Morgan, I know how to fix the problem with the closet. It will solve the problem and save us a lot of money at the same time. She gave a smile. We should share all our clothes. We all do with some of them. But how about all of it? Then we won't have to worry about who's whose. I would have suggested that we go back to our own rooms and just sell the table, but she had already shown me why that was a bad idea. In the months we had lived together, I had learned to give her a lot of weight because she usually had great ideas about how to organize our lives, so I was willing to listen to her. You mean things like shirts, pants, and so on, but not only that, all of it. Why throw anything away? We could share all of my clothes, including my skirts and dresses. I mean, we're pretty much the same size. I just looked at her blankly for about five minutes. Oh, Morgan, grow up. It makes sense. She did it, but how? She could always see a lot of things and come up with great ideas, but I never did until she told me. Even then, she had to tell me it was a good idea 99% of the time before I could see it for what it was. We'd save so much money if we did this. And fix the problem with the closet. We would share everything. We would make great roommates and clothes mates. There's nothing between us. I take what is hers and she takes what is mine. After dinner, I threw all my male clothes in a trash bag. Again, the trash men would come and take them far away. She looked through her closet and pulled out a casual blue dress, telling me it would be a good idea to wear it. She had a point. She even told me that I should wear a top all the time because all of her tops and dresses were made for women. Everything made perfect sense. So this is how my day went. I would get up every morning at exactly 5.30 to make Mona's breakfast. I would get dressed by putting on pants and a top and putting on a dress most of the time. Mona liked it when I wore dresses, so I did everything I could to make her happy. She treated me so well. I'd put on my makeup, I was getting better at it, and make her breakfast. She would wake up, eat breakfast, and go to work, and I would spend the day cleaning the house, running errands, and more and more watching daytime TV. I let my hair get even longer. When she got home, I'd have dinner ready and she'd eat and put on a movie. Then we'd go to bed after watching it together and I'd wear a long blue nightgown. Man, being a single guy was great. I was so glad that Mona was there to help me. 
She even got me to agree that I should give her my bank account so I wouldn't have to worry about money. She also showed me that I didn't need to go to college because I was such a good housekeeper. This went on for a while, and no big problems arose. We were happy living together. We might as well have been husband and wife. She takes care of all the money and goes to work, and I look nice, cook, and clean. It was great. Mona told me she was in love over dinner one night. I had made her favorite dish, pepper chicken. I was really glad for her. She said that his name was Benny and that he was the head of human resources at Dillard's. She said she had been seeing him for a month and was pretty sure she was in love with him. During that time, she hadn't said a word about him. When Mona thought about him, she looked like an angel. I couldn't stop thinking about how he looked. He doesn't mind that you're living with a guy, does he? What are you talking about? Well, some guys would think I'd be competition. No, Morgan. I mean, what do you mean, a guy? I'm a guy. Look at yourself. Look in the mirror. You have a dress on, the pants. We have the same closet. You put makeup on. You dress, act, and talk like a girl. What do you want to say? I dress this way to save money on clothes, and I wear makeup because it makes me look good. You do a great job as a housewife. I must have stood there with my mouth open for a full minute when I realized what it was. And it all made so much sense. Mona was the husband in this family, and I was the wife. Benny would like to live here. In two days, he will be here. This means that you have to move back into the den. So are we going to sell the table? What, and not give Benny a good dinner? No, my room is getting all the entertainment gear. I'm sure she saw my face. Oh, Morgan, come on. You couldn't have missed this. You know that I love you like a sister, right? Come on in. I walked up to her and gave her a hug. She pulled me close and pressed my head to her chest. Mona treats me so well. She came close to me and said, Oh, you know it's a good idea for him to come. She was right, too. Everything made sense. So after a few minutes, we got up and started moving things around again in the apartment. We put my bed back in the living room and moved the TV and love seat into the master bedroom. Because Mona loves me so much, she even gave me some clothes to fill my closet. She said she would go buy more later. When Benny did show up two days later, he brought up a vanity that Mona had bought for me while she brought up a lot of new clothes. This showed that she was honest and had good ideas. I might add that mostly dresses and skirts. I almost wanted to cry. Benny, on the other hand, was a real man's man. He wasn't very fit or good looking, but he was strong, a little bit good looking, and very confident. He took charge of the house right away. Mona told me very clearly that he was the man of the house and that I should treat him with the same respect I did her. She said it was a good idea, and it was. It was clear, but now I had to get up earlier to make two breakfasts, do twice as much laundry, and Benny was known for not cleaning up after himself. I worked full-time as a housekeeper, but all I got was a dollar one hundred allowance every month. I was starting to think that maybe it was time for me to move out and get my own place. But what would I do if Mona wasn't here? She took care of me, and now Benny does too. They fed me and dressed me. They even let me watch TV or eat meals with them sometimes. Both of them are so nice to me. I think Mona already knew this. She told me that she and Benny had talked at length about how I fit into the family. Benny's main problem, it seems, was that Mona didn't need a roommate anymore because she had enough money and enough friends. He was willing to admit that I did a lot of work around the house, but he said that they could split what I did between the two of them. I shouldn't have been kept there. She told me that he really wanted to get rid of me. But, she said, she had told him that I had nowhere to go and that I could only clean houses. That she kept me from being on the streets. That I didn't have any money, assets, or even property. She said that Benny wasn't a bad person, so the two of them came to an agreement. They said I could stay if I agreed to become a legal employee of theirs. To be exact, it was their maid. She said that it wouldn't be much different from her life now, except that she would get paid more than her monthly allowance. They had made a contract that I just had to sign. I signed it then, and things didn't change right away. Almost everything went as usual, but I had more money and more time on my hands. 
I made around $2,000 a month, and they even set up a bank account for me so that the money would go straight into it. Life went on pretty much as usual, and time went by. Then I realized something one day. It had been a year since I moved in. It had been two months since Benny got there. When I looked in the mirror and realized it had been months since my family had heard from me, I started to cry a little. I was curious about their thoughts. When I asked Mona about this, she said she had told them I was moving to Europe before six months, so they probably wouldn't look for me. They wouldn't notice any difference. Mona told me that it was a good idea, and I agreed. As time went on, Benny got more and more successful. He and Mona decided to buy a bigger downtown apartment. I couldn't avoid coming. After all, I was the maid. Benny, on the other hand, told me I had to wear a uniform at the new place. It was a traditional maid's uniform that was black and white. Mona said it was a good idea for me to sign a new contract that tied me to the apartment. They now told me to say sir to Benny and ma'am to Mona. I agreed wholeheartedly that all of these ideas were great. After all, ma'am had come up with most of them and told me how great they were. She takes care of me so well. One day I was waiting for ma'am while she ate lunch at home. She had quit her job and stopped going to school because Benny was so successful. She said that she had a thought. I always like what ma'am has to say, so I sat down and paid close attention. I think it would be smart if you changed your name. Morgan is not a good name for a pretty girl like you, so what's up with Marie? I think it would be smart for you to start seeing yourself as one. I did it. In the end, it was a good idea. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.